So why all the focus about talking about objects? Well, the reality is we've been dealing with objects for a large portion of this course. Strings are technically objects. If we think about a variable, right? Something like 42. 42 is very easy to represent in binary, and I don't know the binary equivalent of 42 off the top of my head, but you know, it's at most uh, eight, uh, eight ones and zeros. Strings are much different. Strings can have zero characters associated to it or a large number of characters associated to it. The way to think about it is, uh, you know, if we took something like a line here, hello world, this string, it's got, how many is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, technically we count the space, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 characters associated to it. Okay, 13, not a, not a large number, but if I wanted to, I could have the complete works of William Shakespeare inside of this string perfectly fine uh, and so we're starting to get a little bit more into the complexity of things but specifically now we start to remember well if I have strings and strings are objects then I have a dot operator that I can use with my objects and strings are going to have functions, methods associated to them that allow me to do things to the string. So in this case, strings have a function known as upper. And in fact, what that is going to do is uppercase the entire string. It won't, you know, try and find an equivalent for uh, commas or spaces or exclamation points. But if there is a letter associated uh, or inside of the string, it will find the uppercase equivalent, and that's what we get. Uh, same kind of thing, as you can easily imagine. If we have a make everything uppercase, we have something that is make everything lowercase. And it'll do the exact same thing, just with lower cases. And there are a number of different functions that are associated to strings. Case in point, let's say, for example, I wanted to look up how many times an L appears on uh, or inside of my string. You know, okay, well, it's hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> well, I can do something as simple as count and then say, well, how many times does this string appear inside of my string, inside of line? Oh, well, in this case, uh, it appears three times. I could also, just to show it, I could also do line dot count. There's count on more than one character. So I could do something like uh, he or or he. There we are. <laughs> less less high pitch on that. Uh, line dot count he. Uh, well, there's only one instance of capital H lowercase e, and so I'd get a 1. I can also do things like replacing portions of my string. So in this case, let's say uh, for whatever reason, I wanted to replace hello uh, with jello. Well, in that case, I would give it some string uh, that I want to look for inside of the string, and then I would replace it with another type of string and so in this case you can see we'd get jello but very much the same of what was going on with count where I could do more than one character I could do something like line dot replace uh, let's say I want to replace all of the L's with uh, two W's again same kind of concepts going on there find every instance uh, of the L character and replace it with two W's. And so the equivalent here would be H E. We see an L, so that would be two W's. We see another L, so we put in two more W's. O comma world, and we see another L, so we get two more W's. 
D exclamation point. So again, once uh, we would take our hello world and that would be pronounced hello or hello world. 